1177, the tiny crusader kingdom of Jerusalem is surrounded by the vast lands of Saladin, Sultan of Egypt and Syria. A champion of Islam, Saladin is committed to eliminating the crusader presence in the Holy Land. He assembles an enormous army and invades the territories of the Christian kingdom. The ruler of Jerusalem is King Baldwin IV, a 16-year-old youth stricken with leprosy. Despite his illness, the young King Baldwin assembles a small force of crusaders and Templar knights. Although greatly outnumbered, Baldwin and his men have sworn to defend Jerusalem. They ride out to meet Saladin. The result is the Battle of Montgisard, a pivotal engagement in the history of the Crusades. In August of 1177, Count Philip of Flanders, a powerful French lord, arrived with his army at Acre, chief port of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Like many Westerners, Philip came as a crusader and as a pilgrim. He intended to visit the holy shrines and to join the Knights of the Crusader States in a campaign against the Muslims. The inhabitants of the Crusader Kingdom welcomed Philip's arrival. Located in the eastern Mediterranean, far from Christendom's power centers, the tiny crusader outpost was surrounded by the territories of Saladin, the great sultan of Egypt and Syria. Saladin was committed to destroying the crusaders, and with his ever-growing armies, he was well positioned to achieve this goal. On top of this, Jerusalem's king, the young Baldwin IV, had leprosy. Although for the time being Baldwin's illness produced few physical signs, the lords and clergy of the kingdom knew that he was likely to die young. However, Philip announced that his visit would be brief. He had come to crusade, but would soon return to Flanders. Jerusalem's nobles encouraged Philip to help them invade Saladin's power center in Egypt, but Philip refused desiring instead to campaign in Syria. King Baldwin reinforced Philip's army with 100 knights and 2,000 infantry, and the Count of Flanders departed. He joined Raymond III of Tripoli and Bohemond III of Antioch for an assault on the Syrian fortress of Harim. Although he was happy to see any crusader territory bolstered by Count Philip's efforts, King Baldwin was disappointed that Jerusalem would not benefit directly from the Flemish crusade. Despite his illness and his youth, Baldwin IV had already shown himself to be a formidable ruler. From the beginning of his reign, he'd taken the fight to Saladin whenever possible. In 1176, he raided near to Saladin's Syrian capital, Damascus, and defeated the Sultan's brother, Shams al-Dawla, at the Battle of Baalbek. Saladin then was aware of his young new enemy's fighting spirit. However, in the autumn of 1177, when the bulk of the Crusader forces were in the north, Saladin seized the opportunity he assembled the full strength of his Egyptian forces. So large was the Sultan's army that its supply needs caused food prices to skyrocket in Egypt. The chronicler William of Tyre insists that Saladin fielded 26,000 cavalry. Some historians believe this to be an accurate figure, while others estimate Saladin's forces closer to 12 to 15,000. But even at this size, the Muslim army was tremendous and capable of conquering the kingdom. On November 18, the Sultan crossed the Egyptian frontier into Christian territory. Knowing that Crusader forces were reduced, Saladin moved at a relaxed pace up the coast into Palestine, ravaging and burning farmland and collecting booty. Grand Master Odo of Saint Amand assembled the Knights Templar at their fortress of Gaza, but Saladin bypassed the Templar's stronghold and drove for Ashkelon one of Jerusalem's key coastal cities. Meanwhile, King Baldwin gathered the few troops available to him. 
joining the king were leading barons Baldwin of Ramla and Balian of Ibelin, as well as Reynald of Chatillon, Lord of Carac. The crusaders had with them their most precious relic, the true cross, believed to be wood from the very cross of Jesus, carried by Bishop Albert of Bethlehem. Altogether, the young king's cavalry was composed of only around 450 knights, along with a few thousand infantry. The Sultan approached Ashkelon on November 24. Baldwin knew himself to be dangerously outnumbered, and so retired behind the city's walls. Now fully confident that Baldwin could not challenge him, Saladin dispatched raiding parties across the countryside. Some Muslim contingents reached the very walls of Jerusalem itself. News of the Sultan's marauding troops spread fear throughout the kingdom. In Jerusalem, the citizens hid in the Tower of David, while the inhabitants of Ramla abandoned their city to take refuge in the fortified port of Jaffa or at the castle of Mirabel. However, King Baldwin was determined to resist Saladin. He dispatched a message summoning the Templars from Gaza. Soon, Grand Master Odo of St. Amon rode up before Ashkelon with around 80 Templar knights. Bolstered by the Templars, King Baldwin led his army out of Ashkelon to seek battle. They marched up the coast to Ibelin and then swung inland. On November 25, King Baldwin and his knights advanced on the enemy. Saladin was surprised to learn that the Christians were approaching. The Sultan was in the middle of moving his army across a ravine near the castle of Montgisard, a few miles southeast of Ramla. At once, Saladin ordered the beating of war drones, the signal for his troops to reassemble. The Muslim troops scrambled to array themselves for battle. Arab chronicler Ibn al-Athir records the scene. The next thing they knew, the Franks were upon them with their battalions and their champions. Saladin only had a part of his army, since many of his men had dispersed in search of booty. When he saw the Franks, he stood firm with the men he had. Although King Baldwin had effectively achieved surprise, Saladin had time to get a good portion of his army into position. Ibn Shaddad, one of Saladin's closest servants and his biographer, tells us that the Sultan himself later explained the situation to him. The Muslims had drawn up for battle, and when the enemy approached, some of our men decided that the right wing should cross to the left, and the left cross toward the center, in order that when battle was joined, they might have at their backs a hill known as Ramla land. While they were occupied in this maneuver, the Franks charged them. William of Tyre also indicates that Saladin managed to achieve some level of battle readiness. He writes, the enemy's forces who had ventured some distance away to seek booty and spread conflagration began to arrive from different directions, which greatly increased Saladin's strength. William of Tyre next describes the start of the clash. The ranks of fighters on both sides now gradually approached each other and a battle ensued, which was at first indecisive, but the forces were very unequal. The Christians, however, strengthened by the grace shed upon them from on high, soon began to press on with ever-increasing boldness. Saladin's lines were broken, and, after a terrible slaughter, were forced to flee. As both William and Ibn Shaddad point out, it was the charge of the Christian cavalry that shattered Saladin's lines. A pilgrim present for the battle later recounted to the Dean of London the attack led by the Grand Master of the Templars, Odo of St. Amand. He took himself into battle with his men, strengthened by the sign of the cross. Spurring all together, as one man, they made a charge, turning neither to the left nor to the right. Recognizing the battalion from which Saladin commanded, they manfully approached it, immediately penetrated it, incessantly knocked down, scattered, struck, and crushed. Saladin's Mamluk bodyguards, wearing yellow silk over their breastplates, were slain almost to a man. 
The Sultan himself was nearly killed, but he managed to escape, mounting a racing camel and rushing away to safety with only a few companions. The Battle of Montquissard was a great triumph for the Christians. The Crusaders chased down the fleeing enemy, slaughtering them all the way to a nearby marsh. The pursuit lasted into the night. Crusaders hunted down the remnants of Saladin's army for miles. William of Tyre writes that the king went back to Ascalon where he awaited the return of his forces who had pursued the fugitives by different roads. Within four days, they had all arrived, loaded with plunder. Carrying tents and driving before them slaves, troops of camels, and horses, they came, according to the words of the prophet, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. In their rush for safety, the Muslim survivors abandoned booty, prisoners, and weapons. Saladin's own journey across the Sinai Desert was perilous, with Bedouin harassing him and his almost defenseless companions. The flight was particularly difficult as violent storms raged for 10 days causing many fugitives to get lost, only to be captured by crusaders a few days later. William of Tyre recalls, many in their ignorance of the localities and thinking that they were on the way home, presented themselves in our villages, either to travelers or to those who were hunting them. On reaching the Egyptian frontier, Saladin dispatched messengers on camels to Cairo, assuring any would-be rebels that he was alive. Once at Cairo, he used carrier pigeons to proclaim his survival throughout Egypt. Nevertheless, the defeat was extremely humiliating for the Sultan, and his prestige was damaged in the eyes of both his subjects and his enemies. King Baldwin IV and his men had achieved a great victory, one of the greatest Christian triumphs of the era. Saladin's casualties were immense, with only about 10% of his forces managing to escape. As a result, the kingdom of Jerusalem was saved. That a small army of crusaders and templars, led by a 16-year-old leper, achieved all this is truly remarkable. Numbers alone do not determine the outcome of battles. Real Crusades history is teaming up with ChristianChannel.com. The Christian Channel provides the very best Christian content, supporting thousands of movies, children's programs, and other entertainment. The Christian Channel is also the home of Knights of the Cross, an upcoming live-action historical drama series about the Crusades, written by yours truly, J. Stephen Roberts. If you pre-order a subscription now to ChristianChannel.com using the promo code Knights, you'll get 10% off. Plus, your contribution will go straight toward funding Season 1 of the series. Click on the link down below for details. And don't forget to use the promo code KNIGHTS 